Whether we realize it or not, we are all part of interrelated systems. And this connection has fascinated me from a very early age. I remember growing up, helping my grandma tend to the garden, and come harvest time, strawberries were always my favorite. And it was probably because of this rule. For every strawberry we picked, we ate one too. Now I know what you're thinking. This did make our harvest go considerably slower, but it also gave me the opportunity to observe the many aspects that made our garden healthy. Much to my grandma's dismay, soon I was equally as interested in the birds and bugs and bees and worms as I was the food we were growing. Now I carried this fascination with me and fast forward 15 years, I was a wide-eyed, first-year undergraduate student looking to make my mark on the world. I'd learned a lot in those 15 years, but my eyes were about to be opened. You know when you have one of those aha moments? I had two of them during that first year of university. The first happened during an environmental studies course on systems thinking. Everything just seemed to click. In essence, systems thinking is looking at the whole as opposed to individual parts and pieces. We're really looking at the cause and effect of relationships here. Let me use an example to demonstrate. On the left-hand side, you will see a number of independent objects. If I added something or if I took it away, it probably wouldn't make that much of a difference. However, on the right-hand side, you'll see these same objects assembled into a system. Together, they're able to accomplish something greater than what they can do independently. This time, if I added something or took something away, it would fundamentally change how that system works. But this is not our first experience with systems. The hydrologic system is one of the first that we learn about in school. But every day, we navigate social, cultural, and economic systems as well. And the decisions that we make impact and influence how those systems change and evolve. So after I was learning about all of these systems, I was pretty sure I was suffering an existential crisis. You know, I was learning about these complex issues, and I wanted to make a difference. I wanted to take action but I had no idea where to start. I was utterly overwhelmed. And through speaking with my other classmates, I realized that I was not alone in feeling this way. The further along we got in the course, the more I learned about feedback loops and linkages and connections. And I realized we've made some big, wicked problems. And that's because there's a gap that exists between how systems function in reality and how we think they function. Our food system is a good example of this. It's a system that has a high degree of human interference. And that can be either a good thing or a bad thing. But in our case, because of the decisions that we've made, we've created an unhealthy and unbalanced system. One that we are so far disconnected from where our food is grown, raised, and produced, it's staggering. So, this was my passion. This is where I wanted to make a difference. So, I thought, okay, through decision making, maybe I can move the system a little bit. So, I became a vegetarian. Now, this was a good first step. I was definitely reducing my <coughs> ecological footprint, but I didn't feel any more connected with my food systems than I had before. So, I got together with a group of my friends and we decided we were going to grow food ourselves. Then we started running into challenges. Challenge number one. We lived in a high-rise dormitory <laughs> with no balconies, no green space, and windows that were barely large enough to grow spider plants, let alone food. OK, problem number two. It happened to be the middle of winter in Canada. All right, so we put our dream on hold temporarily. A few months later, I was at my local farmer's market, eating an apple strudel, minding my own business, 
when I overheard two women talking. They had baskets full of produce, and they were talking about how they used to grow a lot of this in their garden. But as they got older, they were no longer able to tend to them. I quickly interjected myself into the conversation, and within 30 minutes, I found out that these ladies lived only three blocks away from the university. So, disregarding the fact that I had just met them, I asked if they would be open to me coming over, gardening their yard, and in return, they would get fresh produce. They quickly said yes, and within a few months, by springtime, we had eight yards and five gardeners. That first year was a huge success. It was a lot of work, but we were able to grow enough food to share amongst the gardeners and those that were taking care of the yards. So, I thought, we're finally making a difference. But what I was really interested in were the user's experience. So one day, I sat down with those two ladies from the farmer's market over a cup of tea. And this is when I had my second aha moment. They said to me, Kaylin, I love the fresh fruit. I love that you're using our land. But more than that, I love visiting with the gardeners and the sense of community that this has built. That's when I realized, in order to have true system sustainability, not only do we need to take care of the garden, but we need to take care of one another. My scope was too narrow, and my view of sustainability changed from one that was predominantly environmental to one that included social, cultural, and economic components, all part of the same complex system. That next year, we grew more food than we ever had before. We added more yards, we added more gardeners, and we did things a little bit differently. We started to learn about the culture of the residents, planting crops they remember growing up with. And in turn, they gave us knowledge, things that we could never learn on the internet. We also started knocking on the doors, inviting the residents back to visit with us, rather than worrying about disturbing them. And because we had extra produce, we started partnering with a local farmer where he gave us a small corner of his market table where we could sell the extra food and make some money, reinvest it back into the project. We were all part of a system. The natural environment gave us countless things, including sun, rain, and pollinators. The gardeners gave social stimulation and manual labor. The homeowners provided land and knowledge. The farmer provided us a means to sell our produce. And the community benefited from having access to affordable, local, organic produce and their money was being directly reinvested back into food security within their own community. This was an extremely local impact, but it was connected to the larger global goal of food security. Through local action, we were slightly nudging the system towards more system sustainability. Recently, the UN came out with the UN Sustainable Development Goals. These provide us a global framework where we can align local action with global goals, trying to tackle some of these complex problems. I want you to think about, what's my piece of the pie? You don't have to take on the full pie yourself. There's other people out there with passions and strengths in different areas that are there to support you and help you. Find what you're passionate about and take action. Systems thinking is complex and these issues are interlinked and interrelated and need to be looked at holistically. We have these tools where we can break apart the solutions and synergistically reassemble them so that we're addressing shared goals and some of these wicked problems that we've created. We need to bring together people with different backgrounds, all contributing towards shared solutions so that we can get to a more sustainable state. Integrating innovation and biomimetric design 
Just imagine the opportunity for system-wide change. We need to shift our thinking from parts to the whole, from objects to relationships, and from quantity to quality. John Muir, the naturalist, really summarized it well. He said, when we try to pick out anything by itself, we find it hitched to everything else in the universe. For true systems change, we have to think holistically, support one another, and empower everybody to take action and find their piece of the pie. Together, we can solve some of these wicked challenges. And remember, next time you're picking strawberries, it took an entire system to create that delicious berry. Thank you.